Understanding fields in the chaos system is one of the important factors you're going to need to get used to to control the way that things are interacting with the world, providing constraints for the destructible objects and also doing things like causing damage to those objects. As an example in the background here we have three different statues and they have three different fields or one of them doesn't have a field applied at all. The one on the left is an anchor field, the one in the middle doesn't have anything applied at all and the one on the right doesn't have an anchor field so it means that it will collapse as soon as we begin play even though nothing's really damaging it based on the damage thresholds that have been applied as I covered in the previous topic. But you can see that the simulation is being paused or killed when the certain threshold is met with those fractured pieces falling to the ground. In this video I'll show you how to do all of these and a couple of other things. There are other ways that we can look at this as well. I'm just going to very quickly show you another demonstration map I have ready to go. So this is a map demonstrating a few different fields. There's also a way that we can combine the fields here. So I'll go into the fields combined map and this is basically the left and the right statue put together. So this has a static field so it'll stop it from falling which is this one just here at the feet. And we have a kill field, which is the one you can see going around it, which means that when the pieces fall into this, they'll stop bouncing around. Okay, so you could see there, I had to shoot that for the pieces to be destroyed. And then they bounced a little bit, rolled around, and then once they passed that threshold that's been set in the blueprint class, they stopped moving. In comparison, if you remember the one in the middle in the other map, it has that undesirable effect of the fractured pieces bouncing around. So what I'm going to do now, we'll go into all of these in turn and I'll run through how these were created. And just to mention that if you are supporting me on Patreon already, then you can download this project has been made available, ready to download, and you can access all of these templates there now. And just a big thank you to everybody who is supporting me already on Patreon. It's really appreciated and it allows me to keep making video content just like this. So what we're going to look at first of all is this anchor field. Now before we jump into fields, the very first thing if this is new to you we need to go to the plugin section so we'll go to edit plugins and just make sure that the chaos fields is enabled uh, it's the field system not filled so it's this one here that we want the field system by default this will start as disabled even if the chaos system is enabled it's still in beta but it will work perfectly fine so we need that to be enabled for the next step. So once you have that, you'll need to restart your project. When you have that loaded back up, the next thing we want to do is find a folder that you want to save the chaos content. And inside of here, I've just created a single field, which I've named field. Now to do this, we just can right click anywhere in the content browser. We'll go to physics and we can see here that we get the option for a field system. If you just select that, that will create a new field system and you can name this as you like. Now I've seen other examples, even on the official Unreal uh, live stream that they did where I've gotten a lot of this information, where they created a separate field for every different type of effect, named it differently. They would then drag that into the world and create a blueprint based on that. For this project is a little bit messy. I'm not a huge fan of that approach. And the reason for that is just that if we look at this, we can't actually open or edit the individual fields. These are all going to be exactly the same. So you could have a hundred different fields but they'd all be the same as the first one you created. They just have different names and then you're creating uh, different blueprints based on that. So the way that I've actually created these is inside of my blueprints and chaos folder. Uh, the first one we're gonna look at is the anchor field. And all I've done to create this is right click, go to blueprint class, type in field, and the approach that they take where they drag it in, create a blueprint, that will just create for you a field system actor. So that's what I've done, I've just created all of these as field system actors. So create a new one of these, name this one BP underscore field anchor or something, and you'll have your blueprint set up the same way I do. Then if we jump into the new blueprint that we have created, all we want to do here is you have the field system component. So that's the thing that was dragged into the scene. And then that will have the field placed into the properties box here. So this is where you would have a list of loads of different fields. But again, like I said, they are technically all exactly the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create one named field. And you can see if we go into all of these different fields, uh, we'll look at the sleep as well. Then in the field system component, they will actually have the same field, but all of the logic is going to be different in how they're controlled. So if we start with the anchor, I'll show you how this is working. So to begin, all I've done is with the field system component, we can control drag that in. And I'm first calling the reset field system function just to get this resetting on the construction script. This is important that we're doing this on construction. All of this needs to be updated to tell this model to sleep before the simulation is started. 
Okay, so for the anchor, make sure we're doing this on the construction script. And then the next important thing is we're using the add field command. So again, I've just used a reroute node here, but this is still coming from the field system component. And what we're using is the add field command. So we're setting this to be a dynamic state, and then we're gonna set this to be enabled, and we're going to pass in a bunch of field information based on this. And I'll go into a bit of detail in just a moment on that. Uh, but something that people apparently get confused with here is the difference between add field command and inside of the event graph here on the other class, we have add physics field. So these are two different things. Make sure that we're not using the add physics field or anything like that on the construction script because that wouldn't work and vice versa, I believe. So I think this needs to be done on the construction and then this will be used in the event graph. The confusing thing is they're very similar. They take the same inputs. They've got the same uh, enabled states and targets and things. So I think people can get confused with that. So in the field anchor, the final thing I'm doing is I've created a few chaos components over here. So we've got a box fall off, a uniform integer and a culling field. All of these are named exactly as they are when you search for them. So if you need to find these, for instance, we've got box fall off, just type box and you can find all of these. So I haven't renamed these so that it's easy for you to find. So the first thing we want to do is provide the field in which we're going to cull and set the dynamic state as we want it to be. So we're using a culling field for this. All of the variables on these as well are left as default. So you don't need to change any of these in the details properties. You just need to pull from your culling field first of all and search for the set culling field function. Like so, it's going to be the field option here, set culling field. And what we're doing is we're saying that everything outside of this isn't going to be affected, meaning that we're going to take this box information in just a moment and only the things inside of this are going to be set to static. So the, the way that we could do this as well in other examples, if I move this up, and make the box really small. We're actually on, only going to be keeping the midsection here static or uh, apparently nothing at all. I might need to make that a little bit bigger. There we go. So now that means I should be able to shoot the bottom bit and the top bit separately. This was working in the tests, but not in the recording as tends to be the way. So if I move this up a little bit more though, I did get this working at one point. So what I'll do is this is why I've separated the maps as well. If I just use the combined one, this is where I think I had it working properly. There we go. So we've got like a worms thing going on here where we've set the middle bit here to be static and everything else around that is going to be movable and destructible and able to fracture, which is what it means when we're looking at the outside. So everything outside of this box is going to be able to be destroyed or dynamic. And that's really all we need to do is if we remember how this is looking as well with the fracture options, Basically, we're keeping these different fracture leaves. Everything inside, any, any leaf inside of this box will be set to be static. Then down here, for the field type, this is slightly long-winded. You don't need to do it this way technically, but we have a uniform integer. And from this, we're setting the set uniform integer. Now, by default, this would just start with an exposed property for the magnitude. And this is basically saying what type of field do you want this to be? So you could hard code this to be uh, one, two, three is basically an enumerator, which is why I've then created an enum here of type E object state type, as you can see along here, the enum, and then we're setting it to be static. So you could set it to sleeping, kinematic, static, dynamic, or user defined. So for example, if you just wanted to do this the uh, kind of hard coded way, you could set this to be three, option three would be static, uh, but what this will do is expose the option in the editor back here because I've also made this public. I can now update this whenever I want to be either dynamic. So now when we press play, it's just gonna fall because it's not setting those bits to be static. And then if I change that back and maybe need to make this a little bit bigger again, so that it's uh, encompassing a bit more. And of course, go back in and hook this back up at the moment. It's uh, set constantly now to be uh, zero, which I think was dynamic. So we'll hook that back up. With that change, then we can set this back to static. Sometimes you just need to move the box to kind of refresh this on the construction script. And there we go, we now have it again, not moving or falling immediately. So that's the only reason I've set this to be an enum. And again, remember this is an E object state type. I've made this public, which is why we can see it in the editor and then hook that in so we can get a little bit more freedom and control over the type of field this is going to be. And then finally, we want to set the culling information, which is the important bit here again, for the area that will be affected. And quite simply, this is using a box fall off, so a box fall off component. And then I've created a box collision component as well, just so that we don't see this in game. I've changed the line thickness to be five, which is what makes it quite nice and visible in the editor here. But again, when we press play, that will then disappear. 
and all we're doing is we're getting the world transform of the box component. This has also been set to overlap also, it's not blocking, it's just overlapping, so it's in that area. And all of these values have been set at their default with a fall off of none. That is then the culling area, so everything outside of that will not be affected. Everything inside of that box area will be classed as a static field, and that's then being passed into the final field, the add field command. So that is how we are securing our statue here and stopping it from immediately just falling to the ground. Now the other thing I have seen people uh, mention that you need to add the initialization fields here. Uh, I've also found it works if you don't do that, so just something to note. I'm not sure if this is something that was a requirement at one point, maybe in the older versions, and has since been updated, uh, but you could bring in an entirely new statue. As long as you have this updating on the construction script, then those fields are acting correctly from what I can see. So just something to note there, you may not actually need to add the initialization fields at the moment for the chaos geometry here. And then besides that, everything else is the same as you've seen in the previous video. If you've watched the clustering topic, everything is set to cluster based on certain thresholds and the object type itself is still dynamic. So that is the anchor field. I think the other one which is gonna be useful is the sleep field, although I think I should probably call this disable field now. Um, and basically all this is doing, this is the larger field I've set around here, so that anything that falls outside of, uh, within this area even, will be set to sleep when it hits the floor past a certain threshold. So the reason for this, if we just look back in the other map very quickly, in the general map fields, remember this one doesn't have anything here in the middle. If we press play, when that falls, it just kind of continues to twitch kind of bizarrely on the floor, uh, almost indefinitely, regardless of the, the mass or density I give this, it always seems to just kind of twitch uncontrollably until you stop simulating. So that's what this field here is doing. That is responsible for taking any fractured pieces and essentially just disabling their physics. So the way this is working, again, a few things that we've created. Uh, I basically copied and pasted the uh, field anchor if you want to use that so it's got the same components we've got the box fall off uniform integer culling field and a box collision field just for the uh, the kind of space that we're doing this in now this is working on the event tick in the event graph so this is constantly checking to see what has fallen to the ground for the field system component like i've said this time we're using the apply physics field rather than the apply physics component uh, command sorry i've set this to disable threshold you can also set it to kill kill i think will do this indefinitely so we wouldn't be able to set anything back to simulate physics whereas disable will just kind of pause it sleep i haven't been able to get to work uh, the idea was that this was going to be a sleeping field but disable seems to do the same thing at least in that kind of terminology so then for the field input what we're getting again i'm getting the we'll start this side to begin with so we've got the box collider we're getting the world transform again so the the location and scale of this for this one i've exposed the magnitude which i've set to twenty thousand, and using the box fall off to call the set box fall off function the magnitude is the strength that was which we're going to start culling when we detect that movement from the fractured pieces. And then moving over, I'm using this return value twice for the culling and the field information for the culling field. And again, we're using the outside operation, so only things inside of this zone are gonna be cold, which means if you have calculations going on elsewhere, doing different things and you don't want them to stop quite as fast or you want them to have a different magnitude, then they can be affected by something else. This is then going into the physics field. And again, I've just created a smaller one here because this one is kind of falling in on itself anyway. And then in the other example with the fields combined, uh, this was gonna be part of the next tutorial on the next topic where I show the damage. And because you can fire these away, I needed it to extend a little bit further so that we can shoot these out and it would stop them at longer distances. And that's it. So they are the only things really going on in these fields at the moment. Nothing needs to be done in the construction script for the sleep field or the disable field. The next and probably last chaos topic for a while is going to be on how I've achieved the destruction and uh, I'll give you a quick sneak peek at how this is working. We have some damage fields as well. I've got some here which don't need the use of a weapon. They're just on a timer. After three seconds, these will cause some damage in those areas and force this to collapse. Alternatively, you can just come in and shoot them as well, essentially using the same things and that will be the next topic. These are getting a bit longer though, so I'm trying to keep them into their own topic, so it's easy to jump in and out and get the information that you need. So I'll leave this video here. If you did want to get your hands on this project, then do consider checking out the Patreon page for this and other project downloads from any of the topics I cover on the channel. And again, the support from all of the Patreons is greatly 
greatly appreciated as it allows me to keep doing this on a weekly basis in my spare time. If you just wanted to help the channel then do consider leaving a like and sharing the video around if you enjoyed the video or found the content helpful and of course subscribe and hit the notification bell to be kept up to date with weekly releases on content just like this on anything game dev related. As ever though thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.